Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. Today I have a beauty of a recipe for you. It is potato bread and it's very simple to make. The inspiration behind today's recipe is all thanks to Heyday the Game, who are celebrating their 10th birthday. Huge thanks to them for sponsoring today's video, and if you are a regular player of the game, you will know that potato bread is one of the products you can bake in the bakery. So if you want to learn more about Heyday's 10th birthday and to check out the full recipe, see the box below. Now, the beauty of this recipe is that you get left with light and airy results, and that's because of the potato that we're going to use in here. I have some leftover mashed potato, but if you want to make this from scratch, literally boil one potato, mash it up, and save a little bit of that starchy water, because it's that starchy water that will give you that lightness and the airiness to this bread. So, mashed potato is ready to go. What I want to do first is heat up our liquids to activate our yeast. In this jug, I've got some water and I've got some milk. So I'm going to pop this in a saucepan, and we're going to get this up to a nice lukewarm temperature. Now, while that's coming up to room temperature, we're going to get on with our dry ingredients. So into our flour with a good generous pinch of salt. I always think some breads really lack that seasoning of salt, so make sure that you generously season it with some sea salt. We're then going to get in there, which seems like a strange addition to a bread like this, but it's what's ultimately going to give you this lightness to the bread. It's some butter. So cold butter goes into our bread. And you can do this with your fingertips just by rubbing it in until you have nice kind of little pearls of, of butter in there. But I'm going to use a little pastry cutter like this and it just makes the job all the more quicker. This is pretty much good to go. So I'm just going to mix through a little bit of sugar. It's the combination of sugar, saltiness, all that butter we've got going in there. Okay. Sugar's in there, let's get our liquids. So my milk and my water has come up to a nice temperature. It is important that this is not too hot because there is a risk at this point that you can kill the yeast we're gonna be adding. So if you can keep your finger in there, hold it, and not feel like you need to take out really quickly, that means that it's at a temperature that the yeast will be able to survive in as well. So this is pretty much where it needs to be. So I'm gonna add some dried yeast and we're gonna activate it in the heat of this liquid. So uh, about a packet and a half going in here. I love the smell of yeast when you're baking. So give that a quick stir. And I'm gonna leave this to sit for about 10 minutes just until that yeast has activated. And what you'll see is that liquid mixture turns into something that's really frothy and vibrant. So while that's happening, let's grate up the cheese because I always think with potato bread, as an Irishman, a good bit of cheddar works really well through this mixture. So I'm gonna take up some nice mature Irish cheddar and just give that a good grating. Okay, a very generous amount of cheese, but this is a luxurious bread. So pop it in to that flour, and we're just gonna mix it through. Give that a good mix up, and once that cheese is completely incorporated, make a little well in the center of the bowl. And as you can see now, my yeast mixture is nice and frothy. So it's active, it's ready, and it's gonna do its work. So pour that straight into the middle. And slowly but surely, with the wooden spoon, I'm just gonna incorporate wet into dry until we have a kind of a rough, shaggy dough. Okay, this is starting to look good. We've got the shaggy, rough dough, so we're gonna turn it all the way out. Even if it's not completely together at this point, don't worry, we're gonna work it now for the next six or seven minutes, just until we have a smooth, elastic dough that comes together. So this is where you need a bit of elbow grease, a little bit of patience, and basically you're getting your work out in the kitchen sorted. Let's go. Now, if you're watching me bust a gut here and you think there's an easier way, there is of course an easier way. You can do this in a stand mixer and it'll do the job for you. You just need to do it for a little bit less, but now that I've kneaded it and we've got it to this point, a good way of checking that it has been kneaded to its right amount is to press your finger into the top, and if it springs back like that, that is pretty much where you need to be. And now this is gonna go straight back into that mixing bowl, and I'm gonna leave it to rise for about 45 minutes to an hour until it's basically doubled in size. 
This is probably one of my most favorite moments in the kitchen when you're baking. It's the punch down after the rise. If it works, you end up with this pillowy soft dough that's ready to be shaped. If not, you end up with a big block. Let's find out. Oh, beautiful. So let's turn it out. And using a little bit of flour, I'm just gonna shape this into a nice round. You can see how pillowy and soft that dough is. Remember, you've got the butter in there, you've got the cheese in there, you've got loads of great things. So literally, just give it a little knead. Just using the heel of your palm, start to shape this into a nice round. And then when it's ready, just fold it over itself, and over again, and over again. And then start using the heel of your palms just to tuck it under itself. And what you should be left with is something that kind of has a bit of a, a natural seal and just pinch it at the bottom to make sure. So now, at this point, we have a beautiful round potato bread that's ready to rock. So rather than baking this solo in the oven, what I'm gonna do is leave it to rise for its final rise in a little Dutch oven like this. I've lined it with some parchment paper and I'm just gonna carefully lift our little dough baby into this pot. So let it rise here with the lid on for another 45 minutes. Now, I know bread takes a little bit of patience, but it is always worth it. Because as you can see, we have doubled in size. It looked great. And now it's ready for its finishing touches. I have the oven preheating, it's ready to rock. But first, I wanna slash this, brush it with a bit of milk, and give it a little dusting of flour. So, first step is to brush it all over with milk. This is gonna give us some nice color over the top. It's just a light coating that gives you really nice color to this bread. Okay, that's our milk, and then, it really is about using the wrist action now. So you take a tiny bit of flour and just dust it over the top. It gives it that kind of, I don't know, rustic feel. Okay, that is more than enough. So using a sharp knife, I'm just gonna score across this three ways. Okay, the oven is now preheated to 220 degrees Celsius. That's about 425 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna get the lid on. We're gonna bake it for about 35 minutes and then I'm gonna take the lid off and make sure that our bread is baking nicely and that we're getting really good color. Okay, this bread has had its time in the oven and when you lift off that lid, you will see beautiful baked bread that is ready to go. So at this point now, I'm gonna take it out of this little baking tin. Be very careful because this is like super hot right now. And we're just gonna take it across the board. And the beauty of baking it in a pot like this is that you get this gorgeous crust all the way around. It hasn't necessarily risen like you'd expect normal bread to do, but because it's quite dense, you've got potatoes, you've got cheese in there, it's a lovely moist loaf. So let's give it a minute, let's cut it up, and let's eat it with some butter. Okay, I've had a little bit of patience. I've let this sit to rest. It's still quite warm, but it's time to cut. So straight down the middle, let's open this baby up. You can feel, even as you cut into it, just how tender it is. It's, it's not really like a regular bread, it's a much more delicate kind of thing. And have a look at this. Oh, the smell of cheese, butter, and potato bread is exactly what we're after. Now the only way to finish this beautiful, light, delicate bread off is with plenty of butter and to stick it in your gob. Now, as I'm spreading butter, it's still warm enough that it's just about melting. So, without further ado, I mean, light, tender bread like no other. If you've ever been in a restaurant and you've wondered how their dinner rolls are so light and tender, it's that little bit of mashed potato and that's exactly what I'm getting with this potato bread. So there you have it, a delicious potato bread that is perfect for serving with dinner. And this recipe will be featured in Heyday's virtual cookbook to celebrate their 10th birthday on the 21st of June, which you can download from the link in the box below. Enjoy and happy potato bread making. Ooh.